When I was in high school, I played the bass in the orchestra. My music didn't look like this. There were a lot more rests. I spent a lot of time counting rests and a lot of time getting lost counting rests. And I remember this one dress rehearsal um, and the conductor stopped everyone and said, Max, you're lost. And I said, how do you know I wasn't even playing? And she said, you were staring at your music. You were looking at it like it was going to tell you the answer. When you get lost playing in an orchestra, the worst thing you can do is look down and stare at your music. What you need to actually do is look up and listen. The conductor can help you figure out where you are and when to come in, and that helps you listen to what's going on around you. That advice must have stuck with me, because almost 15 years later, I was doing a workshop for teachers. Um, and it was a workshop where the teachers didn't really know why they had to be there, and I didn't really know why they had invited me to be there. Um, and so it didn't feel like it was going well. And they looked tired. When I asked questions, I heard crickets. Um, when they talked, it was off task, sometimes to the point of being insulting and uh, class clownish. So I thought, clearly, this is a disaster. And the more it went badly, the more I looked at my notes, which I had scripted out so carefully. At 10.30, we're going to be talking about this. And at 11, we're going to be talking about this. And at 11.15, we'll be here. And so the, the more badly behaved they got, the more I'm like looking <laughs> at my notes. And I must have started to sound like the teacher from Charlie Brown. Because I was like, OK, in order to be here by 10.30, I have to talk about this. And I have to make it last this long. Because basically, I didn't want them to talk anymore based on what they had said when I let them talk. <laughs> I got immediate feedback from them. We gave them an online thingy to fill out. And um, there was this theme of what they thought actually went well. They thought things went well. And what they wanted more of. And it was interaction. And what I realized was the same thing had happened to me when I was in orchestra, is that when I got lost, when it wasn't going well, I stared at the printed page. Like, that was where the answer was going to come from. This thing that's been scripted out for me, that will tell me what to do. So I was going to then say, and now I've learned this amazing way to plan, and I know how to like, get people talking so I can listen. And it's true, I've gotten a lot better at it since that workshop. But reading my reflections and the feedback that I got from today's talk, I realized that the path from anything towards student-centered is a really complicated and circuitous path. And to give you guys aphorisms doesn't help us talk about what makes this so hard. I think to be thought of as professionals, we need to do a better job of talking about the really hard thinking we do. So things like um, just these aphorisms that you stick on your doorway, like just shut up, listen to the students, listen to, don't listen for, they make for really good Ignite talks but they don't necessarily honor what's so hard about this kind of teaching. And I think one thing that's so hard is we have a lot of data and information about the one path from A to B, how to get students from concept A to procedure B, or known concept A to unknown concept B. Most of our curriculum materials our textbooks, our tasks, treat the other paths like the mysterious parts on explorer's maps. We haven't explored and mapped out that terrain. And so what that means for the teacher is that we don't know what a reasonable and useful outcome is for each path in one day's time. We don't know how to recognize, OK, this is the path that this group of students is on, and I can get them here today, and that's an OK stopping point. And so we end up rushing through the summing up we end up spending too much time listening. We let the student conversations go on and on because we need to hear something we think will give us some information. And then we run out of time and we talk too much because we don't know how to get the students to have that aha moment. So we end up with a situation where having the consensus comes from the students is in opposition to the consensus being super useful. And it doesn't actually have to be that way. Our students are capable of coming up with these, but only if we know what the reasonable consensus for that group is. I don't know if it's possible to resolve that tension the first time you teach a student-centered or an inquiry lesson. And I don't know what we should do about that. I think that what it means is we should teach student-centered lessons, and then we should talk about how we are still lost after that lesson. We should talk about what didn't go well. Some people who are doing it on the internet are the folks at ProductiveStruggle.wordpress.com. It's for teachers to share the struggles that's been productive with them. So please check it out.